And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here with David Martin here with Pat Gross. And guess what? This is our 10th session. I think we started out for maybe five or six, maybe seven, but it just kind of added and steamrolled because there's a lot of great information we've covered over these last nine, the previous nine sessions. Today, we're going to wrap it up and uh, you might be watching this live. You could be watching this and recorded, but we've got a really, really interesting topic for you today to kind of, kind of tie everything together. And because it, she kind of brought this one to my attention. I'm going to toss it over to you, Pat. Pat, what are we going to, how are we going to put a bow on this particular uh, 10 sessions or 10 weeks of, of information that we've been doling out? Okay, I think, yeah, this is, this is the one. We, we all know a gunner, don't we? Gonna, yep. gonna, 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 gonna do this, gonna do that. And, um, and it's always out in the future. Never happens. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. Yeah. So what's 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 missing? It's a bridge. It's a bridge. Uh, um, what came to my attention is look. You can look at this bridge in many different ways, but um, I was reading uh, Napoleon Hill, of course, and uh, it's you see it repeated. But there's actually, you know, there there are five. What do they call it? The six ghosts of fear. So what right. is stopping us? You know, what is stopping us from crossing those bridges to do what we want to do for the, you know, the chalice at the end of the rainbow or the pot of gold? Right. What is the bridge? What is the bridge that gets there? So first of all, there's a couple of ways of looking at it, and I'm starting with fear. And I'll just quickly just sort of like talk about this. In, does this sort of like, is this what's holding you back? Okay. The fear of poverty. You know, if you're going to do make this move, is it going to, if, if, uh, you know, sort of impact you financially? You're going to find yourself, you know, the rag and bones down by the wayside begging for food. That kind of, you know, that 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 knot in your stomach, that's big enough. You know, that's that's sort of like stopping you from getting onto the bridge. All right. The second one there is criticism. Oof. Especially, in today, some... especially in today's <laughs> well, world. Oh, yeah, in the cancel culture and all the rest of it, yeah. Yep. Um, over in here in Australia, we've got something called the poppy, you know, the, the tall poppy syndrome, where if you're sort of like standing out from the crowd, you'll get scissors straight across and you chop down. So people sort of, that's just a sort of like, it's not throughout, but that's just one of those things that you talk about in Australia, the tall poppy syndrome. And you sort of, uh, I remember when, um, when I, even in the UK, um, in, the, in, uh, in one of my jobs, you know, no person could be singled out. We were told it was a team effort. Everything's a team effort. But if you're going to go out there and change the world, you need to stand out. Yeah. You need to be that person crossing the bridge. Uh, and sometimes you don't have that team behind you, especially if you've got the family. You know, the family, the, the family in your ear saying, you know, you're not good enough or, you know, blah, blah, shouldn't you be doing this, etc. So, again, it's stopping you getting on that bridge and crossing it. <laughs> in that particular case, I, I, I want to throw in there, that's one of the most difficult bridges to navigate. Because it, it, it's kind of like when, you know, what I often tell people you know, what do you, when we go over the, what are you willing to give up? Right. And number one is that fear of, in this case, is it that fear of crossing the bridge, but also that criticism, there's a balance. Cause I, you know, I tell people, I'm not saying go get divorced. I mean, if your spouse isn't supporting you, I mean, but you still have a dream and you want to do it or your brothers and sisters, you know, I had people tell me when I was competing, who, who are you to think you can win? And th they were people very close to me. And then when I did win, one of them said, it couldn't have been too difficult if you did it. And I was like, nice. yeah, yeah. And, and, but I mean, and now again, I was in a certain place in my life and it was, a very, it was a very important person to me. But the point is when we have those people in our lives, that's why I stopped talking to them about my dreams. I stopped talking about them to them about what I wanted to do. So sometimes as you're crossing that bridge, you have to, you have to begrudgingly some people you pull along with you. That's the team. You're not, you might not have a team behind you or they're way behind you and you got to forge ahead without them to show them that the path is safe. Other people you have to bring begrudgingly 
and just kind of, you know, you're going and going and going. And then finally they see you on the other side of the bridge and they're like, oh, we're so proud of you. Because that, that was the other thing I noticed too. When I when I went on some of my excursions, shall we say, in, in my life, when, when I was trying to cross some of those bridges, there were people that criticized, you can't, you shouldn't, it's dangerous. What if this happens? What if that happens? And, and luckily I had good mentors and good leaders around me for me to follow. But then when you do make the other side, they're all proud of you, but you have to navigate it, you know, yes. it, it, yes. especially when they're the closest people to you, you have, and that's what I found in my experience was those people that were closest to me ultimately were very happy with the successes I've had, but they always, you know, and now it's like, you know, years later, people are like, oh, you were always so brave and dangerous. I'm like, you don't remember the conversations we had when I was doing that, do you? You were telling me, don't, you were telling, I don't, I don't get into this with them because there's no, there's no point, but they were the people saying, don't do it. You're nuts. You're crazy. It can't work. It's impossible. You know, just because someone That's else right. did it doesn't mean you can do it. Yeah. That's I just remember this. It's, it's just before I decided to, um, to cross the bridge myself, the bridge you, you have to cross, you have to cross the bridge in your own mind. And, um, and so I spent, a lot of time talking to people about whether I should or shouldn't strike out on my own. So I, I was doing a lot of, you know, I was sort of doing a lot of, of asking others because in my mind I was building myself up to, to take the hike across the bridge basically. But as you were saying, I remember it was New Year's Eve. I think I might have mentioned this before and I'm one of the, uh, sessions if not you, well if you have you're going to hear it again um it's new year's eve um sydney uh, my brother is over uh, with his family and i'm with my sister and her family so it's me my brother my sister and everybody and um we're talking about you know striking in business and my brother and my brother-in-law I can remember now both telling me it was a silly idea, a stupid idea, I wouldn't be able to make it, blah, 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 blah. I crossed the bridge. Anyway. <laughs> so, so you're right, you know, that sort of like, and yeah, now, you know, 12 years later, as you say, they're proud of me, I've done it. And they said it's something they couldn't do themselves. Yeah, and, and people often project their concerns <laughs> you know, because it's something they couldn't do themselves, but it's also, that doesn't mean it's not scary when you forge ahead. You know, I mean, I remember having those moments where maybe they're right. You know, even, even when things oh, yeah. started to go my way, maybe, maybe they're right. You know, maybe, maybe, I'm not, <laughs> maybe it's not because you know, you're going to, it's never folks when you're crossing that bridge, you know, you have to understand what kind of bridge it is. It, it's not a straight surface bridge. <laughs> It's a bridge that goes up like this and down. It's a weird kind of bridge, right? Because sometimes, <laughs> you know, you're going to look or it might wobble or you might have an earthquake while you're crossing the bridge or a tidal wave might come while you're crossing the bridge or a hurricane or a, a, a typhoon, you know, all these different things. You know, you might see a lot of rats on the bridge or there might be holes <laughs> in the bridge, you know. And, and <laughs> or, it's so it much that when those, you look one of those wooden bridges you cross in the Himalayas, right? That have a lot of the, a lot of the wooden planks are missing. <laughs> you you got to hold on to the rope. And, and I, was and watching, I was watching on, I was watching on YouTube uh, only just about half an hour ago. Uh, um, my husband does watch some weird stuff. And it was, there was a, it was like a, a cycle bridge and I'm talking back a cycle path about that wide, literally that wide over a gorge. There was no fences at the other side. Once you're on it, you had to cycle straight across it. And, uh, and, and the person had a, sort of a camera and they were sort of looking <laughs> and going, oh my goodness, I could never do that. But that's just what it's like. You're on a bridge. When you get to the other side, there's no turning back. And in fact, this time, <laughs> you just reminded me when, 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 as you said, I would just go, oh gosh, wouldn't it be, I'd, it'd be a lot easier if I had a job. And my husband turns around to me and goes, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and he says in nice, such a way as there's no way that I would survive in a job. <laughs> that, that's so, a, once you've crossed the bridge. <laughs> you can, right. And, and I, yeah, I've seen people 
that have done that and they've tried to go back and they just can't. It's not some people. Well, I guess that's not some people can go back because they just they shouldn't have never crossed the bridge in the first place. They, they like it and they had a good yeah. experience, but and that's a small percentage that they, they just have to go. Just let them go. And that's fine. But yeah, most most people, once you get over and you have the experience and you you get the feeling and you start to see results. And, you know, I tell people I've only had I've crossed that bridge probably twice. I've had two two jobs as an adult. And neither one lasted a year. I tried because people say, hey, this would be a good job. And I said, okay. But then I, I also, I mean, I ran into conflicts. I ran into, um, you know, politics and, and corporate games and, you know, the cutting of commissions and stuff like that. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is what the company told me. I, I sold, I, I mean, I just, I, I sold a ridiculous amount of uh, placements. We were doing pers- uh, com- uh, high technical staffing in a very short period of time. And I just used my network of people that I knew and I got introductions to people and, you know, we had a good service. We provided, we had good recruiters, provided a good service and it worked. And then the owners of the company said, guess what? (laughs) We're like, what? And they said, we're going to pay you less commissions on the business that you've already written. And here's why that's good for you. And I'm like, wait a minute, you're going to pay me less than you agreed to and okay, so maybe you're going to give me a big base salary or maybe you're going to, no, none of that. They said, you get to go rebuild it all again under the new payment plan. Like, how is that a good thing, right? You're cutting my pay. I did the work You're not, and now you don't want to pay me. And uh, which was crazy, right? I mean, it's just, and so that was like, it was a very short period of time after that, that I left. And I said, never again, yeah. never again. And it's, um, it's hard. It's hard because Um, there's also that time I will tell people that, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's not a nine to five world, as you know, it's, it's not a, it's not bankers hours. Um, although I get to do things that, you know, people say, yeah, but I see you taking time off. And in the afternoon, uh, you go to the gym in the morning and you, I see you out walking your dog in the afternoon. I said, yeah, but what you don't see is that time in the morning from like five, I get up early. Again, that goes back to one of the sessions we did on commit to yourself and, you know, you got to take being selfish, you got to take care of yourself. Um, but yeah, I mean, they don't, they don't see me up at 11 and 11 o'clock at midnight because that's what it takes. You know, they don't see Andrea doing her business. You know, they say, well, yeah, she's at the warehouse all day. Right. And then she comes home and has paperwork and computer work and, and um, brokers to talk about bringing, you know, cause they import stuff from overseas uh, from Mexico specifically. And there's a lot of paperwork that has to be done for that. It's the after hours stuff, which I actually like because it allows me that time, you know, to go watch Sophie at a, at a concert in, in her, you know, in her, to play her cello or to go watch Gabby play, play soccer. You know, we've got some matches coming up over there in the UK, you know, up in Newcastle and I'll be able to just go and I'll be able to work from over there, but it's not, you know, but I had to cross that bridge again back in 2000. That yeah, was 2000. And, um, it, it's 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 a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Well, what you were talking about, about looking after yourself, because that brings us up to the next fear that uh, Napoleon had identified, and that was the fear of ill health. Because the one thing about crossing this bridge is that, uh, as you said, it's not a nine to fiver. Oh, if you can do it nine to five, you're doing very, you know, you okay, oh, hats off to you. But you you have to put yourself first. You have to put your health first because nobody else will do it for you. Uh, um, there's, there's taxing on the brain. So you've got nobody there to um, to soften the fall. You, yeah, at the end of the your... day, you know, if you fall crossing that bridge, right, you're on your own. So, you know, there are lots of things can go wrong in, in that sort of, you have to, look after yourself because it's so easy to become stressed and burnt out um, especially in the early days when you're trying to build your business well i mean and and i've seen everything from people from people gaining weight to people you know as you said stress out i mean i've seen the gray hair i've seen all all that i mean talk about the gray hair right i mean (laughs) but i blame this on my daughters not on work but yeah you you've got to take You've got to take care of yourself. For me, one of the things I like about um, 
like the exercise for me, whether it's I go to the gym or I go for a run or I'll, you know, whatever it may be, is that's one of the ways that I really blow off steam. You know, when you got a project here going on and I got this project and I've got, you know, you know, the college project with Gabby and then, you know, Andrea's got her programs and we got things going on back in New York and the family situations. And, and, and here's the thing. I read this, this, this was a great, a great little piece that I read online the other day. It was a short little meme and it was just about, um, while we deal with all that, everything I just mentioned about stress and family and different projects, we all have it. That's what I want you to understand too out there in, in, in listener land, right? Is that you're going to, there are people that have laid the groundwork and we've, Pat and I have laid a lot of groundwork here um, in our, through our businesses, through our lives and our entrepreneurial endeavors. And you can follow that. You can build on that. You can learn from that because we're all going through the same stuff. So everybody's got, you know, when I love when people tell me, yeah, but I'm tired a lot. Well, I'm, I'm tired too. You know, I, I run out, you know, there, there are times, but you push through. There are reasons that uh, part of the exercise reason I have good endurance. I have good, I'm, I'm in good health. I can work longer hours. I can do more stuff, but I'm all, you know, there's always, I could be tired. I could be busy. Uh, you know, there could be stress, whatever it is. We all go through it. Everybody goes through it. I'm not saying that I've got any more than anybody else or any less, which, which we all just do. So there's ways to navigate that. And that's when you're, when you're self and you take care of yourself, it really allows you to navigate those situations in, in a much more um, manageable fashion, I guess, is, the, is what I want to get to. So, Yeah, and then you're right. You just paint, uh, touched on, just, just quickly mentioned before we move on, that, yeah, what we've got planned for the next step, David, as, as we sort of can discuss further, is that we want to take this program, this 5D thinking, and actually have a, an executive program. Which will was sort of <laughs> as we talk talk through there will there be more information about that coming up. But um, you know what we're talking about here, our lived in experience is something that we can actually work with people and okay. help them. So we're talking about this this bridge at the moment. You know we help we can help you cross the bridge because we've been there. As as David said, everybody's bridge is different. I can I, you know I really empathise with this bridge of all different sort of shapes and forms and. And there's a length to get there. Some people can jump over straight away. You know, others, right. the journey is pretty long. So, yeah. Well, we, we talked about that with the <laughs> I, I, one or two sessions ago. That was the thing about getting into the dance. And, and you could use the same thing on the bridge, right? Some people will look like they had a much easier bridge to cross. Right. And, and they'll like take my friend, my friend Val, who's up in uh, he's in up in Canada. People look at Val and they say, wow, he's so lucky. He's got a 6,000 square foot house, right? What is that? Like a 600 meters squared, something like that. It's enormous. And it's in a really posh part of Edmonton. And he's got, you know, he's got what? He's got a separate warehouse where he has like $3 million in cars, you know? And, and they say, oh, he look at, look at how lucky he is at, at this stage of his life to have all that. And I'm like, you didn't know Val back when. I mean, yes, in some ways he's been very blessed. But he's also gone through the ringer a number of times to get up to that particular point. And so it's not always a walk in the park. So they look at him and saying, well, his bridge was short. Well, he had tried so many other bridges. Right. Or he made it through the potholes and the holes of the bridge and the tumbles and the earthquakes and the tidal waves and the typhoons and, <laughs> and all that different stuff. And he got to, and all you're looking at is the last 10 feet of the bridge, which is perfect and hasn't been damaged at all. So you, true. <laughs> you didn't see all the other part of the bridge. You're just seeing the last 10 yard, 10 meters of the bridge. Yep. And, and, and so, yeah. yeah and along that, <laughs> along that bridge, you might have some potholes and you fill those potholes with your, with your assets, your knowledge, your skills, your materials, so that you can go straight across. <laughs> you, you've got to stop along the way and fill the gaps. You know, so it, it isn't straight. For, it's not just not linear, but you know, the timing you, you've, you Yes, you're going backwards to go forward. You're stuck well, there for a while. <laughs> I, I just got an image of a zigzag bridge, right? It's going to go like this. <laughs> it's, it's not a straight bridge. Uh. Yeah, and it goes yeah, downwards, upwards. <laughs> yeah, but there, there are but there are people, it will seem that they had an easy bridge. And you have to understand, forget about, like they, like they say in the, the, the mafia movies, forget about it, right? Forget about it. It doesn't matter what they go through. 
you've got your own journey. Pat has hers. I have mine. You know, you're you're going to go through, and what you have to what you have to focus on is how you can get across your bridge in the quickest way. And that's where you know we talked about mentorship and and studying. If you can learn, especially at this stage of my life, I you know I don't want to take ten years to learn something. I don't have 10 years to learn something. I mean, I have 10 years, but I don't want to invest that 10 years in learning. I want to take the next 10 years and I want to do stuff. So I'm going to look for people that know stuff. You know, somebody like our mutual friend, Chris, right? My old mentor, Gary, when it comes to mental side, uh, my friend, Jordo, when it comes to marketing, um, another friend of mine who's an expert at, uh, uh, he's real hard to come, to get in touch with, but when, you know, he's a, he's a Facebook guy. He knows how to, man he knows how to market on Facebook. He knows how to, work with the algorithm. So instead of me studying everything that they did and modeling that, I'm just going to connect with them and learn from them. So there's ways you can short circuit. You can, you can kind of repair your bridge before you even get there, but there's still going to be some work involved, right? You still got to sweat. You still got to, you can't drive across the bridge. You got, right. In my opinion, <laughs> driving is not because you, you got to see what the, I, you know, most vehicles aren't going to make it. It's, it's a year. It's your journey across the bridge well you just uh, brought me there to one of the other fears which is the fear of old age so <laughs> so i mean this yes, is I'm, that, getting, I mean... I'm getting it all right i'm getting it all <laughs> no well it, it comes in that because i think look i don't as we're younger i just don't suppose we appreciate old age as much as we do as we get older and then when the old age starts to match you know starts to look oh it's not too far away in the distance uh, um, that's when I think that's when we start to panic start to panic in middle age it's not a panic as such there's something inside people that goes is this what I'm is this what it's going to be like for the rest of my life you know the middle age crisis yep it's that same it's that same instinct so 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 so, so there's a driver there going you know and going back to that um you know the the, the analogy of being on your deathbed and looking back on your life uh, um, and looking <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the graveyards full of, you know, full of ideas that weren't materialized. And, and that's sort of sometimes people start to panic as they get a little bit older, reaching retirement or they've retired and, they, you know, what's left. So there's something inside you then, even, even late in life, that may trigger you to actually want to cross that bridge again. You know, you, you haven't finished yet. There's a driver yeah. there. It's not a, you know, the, the fear is sort of like getting to the end of your life and thinking I could have done better or I could have done this differently. Oh, I, I, that's, that's one of my drivers is that I, based on my belief system and not promoting any belief system to anyone out there, but I believe when, when my, when I'm done here on this earth, I believe that I'm going to be, uh, that a question will be asked of me at the next level. And it's, and it's more, and you're right, because it's more prevalent now than it was in my thirties. I started to think about it more in my forties. And now as I'm near at the end of my fifties, I'm thinking more and more about this. And that question is going to be, and I had this conversation with the guy this morning, um, his, it was more of a spiritual context, but, um, the question is going to be, did you do everything you could with the gifts that we gave you? And that for me is really, really resonating. Did you do everything you could with the gifts that we gave you? And right now, if that was to happen now, I will say as much as I've done, I've done some really cool stuff. But there's a lot of there's a lot of bridges I left uncrossed. And you know what? You're right on those bridges. Think about all those bridges that, of those fears as bridges. And I'm thinking of people I know close to me, and I look at them, and I think you, you, they wanted to do more. But those bridges, the bridge of fear, you know, the, the fear bridges, the bridge of, of uh, criticism, the bridge of what happens if I fail, you know, poverty, you know, the pride. There's other bridges, I think, like the bridge of pride, the, br the bridge of uh, sort of, you know, there's different, there's all these different bridges, not well, just the, these, this fear, we're talking about fears, but there's lots of little bridges there. And, well, self, and the self-worth and, and, and self-confidence like bridge. 
Yes, and they're not cross, and they can't cross. And that's just just that I see it now. You know, people in their fifties, people in their fifties will get to that point, and yeah, it's there's a regret there. They want to do it, but I suppose as you get old, it's like those bridges become stone. They're flexible, but for some people, they become rigid. And they just well, no, actually, it's their way around. You think about it, because if the, if the bridge was rigid, they'd cross it easily. It becomes well, even. It's, it's, more no, but I, I know what you mean. It's, <laughs> instead of a bridge, I think what they deal with instead of going across the bridge is they're dealing with an anchor, and not a, not an anchor in yes. the way we talk about it in neurolinguistics, but an anchor that it's because one of my mentors told me this. He said, "You take the guy who gets in a job and he says, well, it's a good job, but I have these dreams, and I'm going to get started on my dreams.'" And then he gets into his mid thirties and he's married and then he has a kid and he has a sex kid and then he's 40 and then he's 45 and it's, well, I'll get there. I'm going to get started soon. And then he's 50 and pretty soon he's at his sixties and he says, well, it's been a good life. I didn't, I didn't do all the things I wanted to do. And then he starts rationalizing why not going after his dreams is okay. Now on the positive side, where we are now, and I'll speak for myself, but we're in a much, I'm in a much better 59 years old now is far different than it was when I was 29. I think our generation is much more vibrant. We have much more capability. We, I don't want to say capability. They had the capability back, you know, 30 years ago, but we have the technology, we have the abilities we have the mindset. We're more open to it because back then somebody at 59 was like, dude, I'm almost 60. You can't do that. You can't, you know, people, nobody would have go out and do the exercise and the workouts, not just I do, but that tons of people are doing. There's a woman at the gym who is 71 years old doing exercises that women in their thirties can't do. She's doing these things called muscle ups, which I can't do yet. I'm still learning how to do it. I'm working on the technique. She's amazing. Right. But physically, I think we're, we're healthier. We have more energy. There's better technology, these things, right? You know, the things back then we said, we didn't just, I don't know how to do that with this technology, internet and, and the, the phones and the laptops. You can't say you don't know how to do something anymore. You no, can't, I, I don't know You've how to speak thinking. Spanish. Go, go get the app on your phone. You'll learn Spanish in a month, right? You can do any of that. I've got so, friends. Yeah, I've got, I've got friends who even today, now you're talking about a generation ago, but I'm thinking even today surprises me. I've got friends from my school days and from uh, my younger employment days who've retired in the late 50s, uh, yeah. just before they've reached the age of 60 or at 60. I've got friends who are still working at the age of 78. <laughs> <laughs> but when I say working, they're doing something they really enjoy. They're making a difference. So, you know, I'm sort of, if, you know, as you said, I think back to my mother and my mother retired at the age of 60. My dad retired not long behind her. Uh, uh, he decided he'd had enough because she'd had enough. So, you know, it was like there. Whereas, as I said, in our generation, many of us are still just keep going. We just keep going. We just <laughs> uh, we've got more it's sort of like more things to do in life. You know that that bridge for us uh, once you that on the other side, we've, it's a bigger playground. Yeah, and, and there's not as many there's people on it. There's a big playground on the other side of the bridge. That's and right. There's not as many people on it. <laughs> it's so. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's critical. I mean, I, I think that, you know, it, there's a lot of room. There's a lot of things to do on that other side. Um, it's, you know, again, part of it comes back to knowing what you want on that other side, why you're going to that other side, really, you know, collect on, on, on into that stuff, identifying the fears, because you're not going to eliminate fear. There's always going to be something that, you know, and sometimes it's just because of the unknown of how we how to handle something. And once you learn how to handle something, then it's no longer an unknown and it's easier to overcome. And it's the same thing on those bridges. If you don't know about the potholes, well, we tend yes, sometimes it costs, you know, yeah. it takes resources, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy. And sometimes it hurt. You don't well, one come of those through... other losses. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, one of those are gone. One of those other losses is loss of love. One of those fears that we have is that. You know, and 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 yet, it, hey, gosh, it can it can affect your relationships. 
um, you know, making making drastic changes, crossing that bridge, especially if the others don't want to follow or, or don't support you, don't want to come with you. Uh, um, it's, um, you have to be strong enough to to believe, and I think this is part of that. The um, the bridge you must cross as well is. And one thing I, I did at one point when things were getting really, really tough for me, it was just four words, four words that came into my mind that made all the difference. Let go, let God. That's all it was. And you just release. You got to cross the bridge, uh, the bridge you have to cross. You just have to have faith. You just have to let go. You just have to go. You can be, look, the last fear was death. So I've just given you all the fears, but right, at the end right. of the day, with all of this baggage, all of this stuff here, you just have to let go. It's, and it's bounce. So, That's all I can say, you know. <laughs> no, it's funny you say that because there, there's a, you know, oftentimes when I work with people and I'll tell them, okay, you set the goal, but then you have to let go of the goal. Letting go is not something that people are accustomed to, whether it's the goal or, look, your goal is to get to the other side, but if you're, and yes, you have to plant the idea that you want to go to the other side, but now you got to focus on what's in front of you. The process of getting to the other side is avoid that hole, climb over that wall, you know, swing around, grab the vine and swing around and jump over, you know, the alligators, um, whatever. Because yes, there, and yes, we didn't tell you what kind of bridges these are. There might be alligators on your bridge or crocodiles <laughs> for those of you down, down under. Um, you got to focus on, you got to, we have to learn to let go, right? Let go of, you know, it, it's not about, I think part of that comes into the, the, the model of perfection that people have today too. If everything, if it's not perfect, they don't want to talk about it, right? We have, I can't do this because what if I make a mistake? And that comes into that, that, that criticism, yeah, the loss so of, yeah, loss of criticism. love, right? If I'm not perfect, yeah. I'm not, no one's going to love me. You know, and so they have to, there, there's, so a lot of this folks, sometimes I know we bounce around here a lot here, but you, as you're, you know, as you, you'll start, to, as you go through, the best way to learn about this stuff is to start, get on the bridge, get on the bridge, you know, yeah. set your goal, figure <laughs> out where it is you want to go, figure out what bridge it is you got to cross and start walking and we'll be there to help you along. The, we're not going to do it for you, but we'll help you along the way. Yeah, I got you think got me thinking about um, when I when I talk to people and uh, we've got this challenge and whatever and and that's the next step. There's a goal there, and you're right. I just say to them, now then, let's just just go away and not think about it. Yeah, and then say go away, think about it. I said go away and not think about it. As you say, it's one of those things that you can sort of put in your mind just before you go to bed or just get up in the morning or just put out there, just go for the walk and you just you just put it out there. Yep. Uh, and I know this is thing and you just but you see what you're doing is you're you are you are putting the order out there and your your subconscious is actually doing the work. It, That's it, how it, I find yep. the bridge the between guys... your conscious and your subconscious. <laughs> One of the guys said the other day on the marketing team call, you know, because again, and here's the thing, guys, we can all learn. I mean, I still sit, th this guy's almost probably not quite half my age. He's, he's 33, right? So he's a little more than half my age, but he's a brilliant marketer. So I can learn from this guy. We can learn from everybody. And one of the things he said, and I know this, but it was the way he said it that really made it resonate. And that was focus on the process, not the result. And I like that because it, it really, it resonated with me to the point where, aha, right. Focus on what I'm doing instead of stay, living over there in fairyland. Like you said, you started this with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. That's where, when you just focus on the result, you stay in that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And then, you, you know, or uh, as our mutual friend, Chris said, and he, I, I'll, I'll just call him out on this because he puts it in one of his audios that he was the next month guy. Next month, I'm going to crush it. Next month, I'm going to I'm going to do this. And he kept telling himself, so it was always next month. It was never this month that he would get the result. And he made a point out of that. And I laughed. I said, I laughed because I can relate. And yeah. it's true. When you, when you next month yourself to death or when I get across the bridge, well, you got to get on the bridge, folks. You know? Well, I just... 
I take it different. Yeah, I just I like here. I've just got a page. Well, I don't know if people can see it, but basically it's my notes for today. And basically I'll just I'll put it out there. Uh, um, and it's my, what I put out there is how can I, how can I not yeah. I'm going to do this. It's more how and then the how comes to me. I don't right. need to sit and laboriously think about it. As I said, I've, it, I, I'm talking about the bridges in the bridge in your mind now. The, the bridge the bridge between your conscious and your subconscious right so i put it out there how can i do this and the answer comes to me right because you're focusing on the I process of to. how to get it done instead of what it is <laughs> absolutely i i can that, that's your that's your next book how can yes. i how can i how can i cross the bridge yeah, <laughs> and, and, and which bridge do i have to go across <laughs> So yeah, look, and it all comes down to in the end of the day is look when you've we talked about all the stuff for crossing this bridge. We've talked about what that bridge may look like, but at the end of the day, you also must be you must trust your intuition. You must trust what's driving you. You must right. trust what your life goal is. If you know that, then you you know you're crossing the bridge. The bridge you've got to cross with all everything that can distract you. There's also got things there that can drive you across the bridge. So we've talked about the distractions, but let's have a talk about, you know, what your drivers are. As you said, your drivers are your life goals. Your drivers, are, you made it beautiful when you talked about what your life skills, you know, what, you, what you're, what you're, um, what, why you're here in life. Right. I, I mean, so yes. we all have skills. We all have abilities. We all have a mission and, and whatever you got to find out. It's funny. What did, what did the guy say? The two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. And that really resonated with me because that, that and, and by going through, and, and you know what, what Pat's talking about here is going through the process of finding out what it is you want and why. And when you marry that together, that's why when people talk about goals, oh, I struggle or goal setting doesn't, no. And if, if you're not aligning the vision of your life with why that and understanding why that's important to you, the drivers sometimes don't show up because you, you've got to align the two. And sometimes what we think we want is not what we want. We went over that a couple of sessions ago. But when you find that and you marry that together with values and vision, and, and then you, you, know, you, you realize and you start asking yourself, how can I instead of, you know, yeah, what if is okay to get yourself going? But then you got to say, okay, now it gets down and dirty, right? You got to, you got to pull the weeds. You got to get in there and say, okay, I got to pull some weeds. I, then I got to wash my hands, do some other stuff. I got to pull some more weeds. Cause guess what? Some more weeds are going to come in. I got to fill a hole. I got to swing from a vine. I got to avoid the crocodiles. I got to avoid the people who are saying, no, don't go, don't go. Stay here. Come back, come back, come back. The anchors, the people that throw the fish hooks in your leg when you don't know the fish hooks are there that are trying to, you know, you're trying to run forward and you run it. Like, Why am I stuck? And there, you realize that there's people pulling back on your on your clothes. Yeah, for every neg negative is a positive. And when you talked about the pulling the weeds, my immediate thinking was, yeah, but there's loads of seeds. You've got to plant those seeds. You've got to nurture those seeds. You've got to grow those seeds, um, and yep. and you know in, into into fruition. Because I mean, I'm I'm ter terrible. I, I'm always coming up with new. I mean, that's part of what you know what my, the entrepreneurial mindset in me is. I'm always coming up with new 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 ideas, creating those linkages, and coming up with these new ideas. Uh, and so I go into creative mode. <laughs> I'm always nurturing those seeds. That then, but the thing is, then is you've got to harvest those seeds. So to cross Eventually. the bridge, you've got to plant. You've got to you've got to nurture and grow, and you've got to harvest. Yep. And I think that's where people get stuck. They've spent so much time on these hurdles on, along the way that they don't know how to harvest. Oh, I, I mean, I cannot tell you how many people I come across that go from program to program to program to program, and they never harvest. They, they, in other words, they plant, they plant, they plant. They even tend some crops, but they never harvest. Yeah. They're always going on to the, they're moving to the next farm, so to speak. They're going to the next, oh, there, there's a better, and, and that's part of it is there, there's work involved, but there's completion. You know, we, we've talked about that too. There's completion, which is critical in all this stuff. But guys, there's a lot of work to do, but what else are you going to do? Watch TV reruns, right? Um, 
you know, I mean, I can only watch so much football or soccer simply because the game's only 90 minutes. I don't have to go every, I don't have to watch the replay of the game that I just watched. I mean, I get, or people talk to me about binge watching. I need a new series to binge watch. Well, why wouldn't you take that energy and put it into a, a part-time plan, put it into yeah. a health plan, put it into uh, maybe a, going down to the, the local soup kitchen and, and serving or, or, you know, giving back to your community or going to a community house, as you call it. Right. And learning what you can yeah. do and how to connect and, and bring something into your community uh, well last night get perfect example my other half was watching a movie two hours later i was still writing in my journal so i mean <laughs> it just <laughs> the, yep. the thing about all of this is that yes that there is there is there's the bridge you have to physically cross to get from it to where you want yep. to be but there's also the, the bridges that you must cross to be able to step on that bridge in the first place to move forward and to get to the end of the bridge. You don't know what that bridge looks like. You know, that we're talking about the bridges of the mind and the bridges of right. the fears and all the rest of it. But the bridge that you're crossing, as you said, it's different for everybody. We have no idea when we start exactly what that bridge is, because if we did, I think nobody would cross it. But I mean... <laughs> But that's life for you know we're, when we're born we've no idea what life's going to look like so this is like a bridge in your life that you have to cross my message here with you know we talked about all those things that can be the bridges you need to cross before you as is just do it get if started. you've got the motivation you've got the drive you know that just get started just do it and but along the way um, the wise person will actually, you know, there's the, there are those people along the way that can help you and guide you. And this yep. is this is an idea where those, yep, where these mentors come in. Right. Uh, we always need a mentors to guide us towards the light, so to speak. Whether those mentors, and we talked about this before, there could be people, there could be books, there could be education, there could be training, uh, and. There's always something there to guide you as no path. Okay, your bridge might be different, but no path has never been walked before. Somebody somewhere along that life journey has had an experience that you could learn from. Bingo. That that one, that one right there is huge because it's you and, and Pat, I, the, when I hear you say that, I guess what I'm trying, what we're trying to get across, folks, is you're not alone. And, you know, we touched on that. And, and, oh, and by the way, one little side note, you may have to cross bridges while you're crossing the bridge, if that makes sense. There's little bridges, mini bridges you're going to have to cross while you're doing that. But again, like Pat said, you're not alone. Nothing is unique. Everything that's been done, that's been created or any challenge that someone has had, there may be slight variances, but so there's information and people and books and, and knowledge out there that can help you get through it faster and more efficiently. And that's that's a lot of what these series are for. There's whether you connect with either one of us or with someone else, there's help out there. Again, when I said this, there's no for you to for anyone to claim ignorance in this day and age that they just didn't know is just, it, 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 no, you can't you can't use that one. That one's been removed off the table. You have ad access. Almost everybody I know has a cell phone. If not, you can go to a library and use a computer and access the internet. There, there's there's access to get out there and get the information that you need, right? Like today, Pat's talking. And why don't you go over those six fears again? That the because these are brilliant. Napoleon Hill was brilliant when he put this stuff together. And we'll just recap those so that we have those again. Okay, so we've got the fear of poverty, we've got the fear of criticism, we've got the fear of ill health, we've got the fear of loss of love, we've got the fear of old age, and then we've got the final fear of death. And, and when I was thinking ones. earlier about that, uh, yeah, the death one, I was thinking about being on the deathbed, uh, the rich, what's it, richest man in the, in the grave, richest man in the cemetery, one of the, it's, 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 um, it's a book I'd recommend people go and read. Is it Richest Man in the Graveyard or Richest Man in the Cemetery? It's one of the okay. two. Yeah, uh, yeah. But have a look. Yeah. Have a look. And it, it, it's all around. Um, it, it is all around getting to the end of your life and realizing, you know, that you could have done more. That's the key. And that, that's one of my motivators right now. Right. And that is 
to get there. I mean, because I've, I've, and again, I've done a lot of really wonderful things and had a lot of great experiences. And uh, I just posted something on, on Instagram the other day. And it was a photo from 1983, right? 40 years ago, 39 years ago of myself in front of the Taekwondo school with my instructor uh, as we were preparing to go to the world championships that year in Denmark. And that, that photo that somebody else had posted just took me back to a spot where it was like, wow, there's so many cool things in my life that I've done, but so many that I left unfinished. It's time to go. And again, with the fact that you and our generation is much healthier, more active. So we've got another 20, 25 years to really get stuff done. And again, going back to the idea that Jim Rohn said, make your life an example, not a warning. That's, that's a big one. So we're kicking it up a notch here for the next year on the way to, on the way to 60. <laughs> and don't, and don't be the richest man in the cemetery. I've just looked and don't it be the rich, right. <laughs> Spend it. Don't, don't hold on. Don't hoard it. Spend it. <laughs> I mean, earn like a millionaire. Yeah, you can live like a monk if you want. But I mean, that's that's part of the reason is and that, that's part of the thing, too. We, we should probably do a money mastery about just about the whole concept of, of you got to keep it flowing right without without money flowing, without money moving around. It's energy. It's got to keep moving. If you cut that's it, it becomes stagnant. But that's a whole nother show. But folks, you've got the that's the six fears. And those are the big ones. I think once you once you adapt, if you take notes, if you want some guidance if you just want to sit down for a strategy session to kind of see where you are uh, whether myself or pat you can reach pat by going uh <coughs> patricia gross on linkedin uh that's g-r-o-s-s-e or you can email her at pat at the community entrepreneur the community entrepreneur.com right yes right, okay uh, myself, you can reach out to me, uh, go to the accelerationfactor.com or email me directly at David M at Cygnus uh, And you can reach again, reach out for either one of us. We'll connect with you again. We can chat a little bit. You can check out some of the different, you know, um, services or products, because again, these will shorten the lifespan and give you the leg up. Once you know what you want to do, you can take the, you know, you can choose to take the long road and try to go figure it out. It's like playing darts, right? If we turn off the lights and you don't know how to play darts and we give you darts and say there's a dartboard on the wall, if you just start throwing darts at the wall in the dark, you may eventually hit the dartboard. And eventually, if you just never stop, you may get a bullseye. Or we can turn the lights on, show you where the dartboard is, show you how to hold it and show you how to throw it. Do you think your chances might be a little bit better to hit the dartboard? Just saying. Pat, anything else you want to end up with I'm, before we wrap it up? Yeah, I'm just so excited because we have actually worked out the uh, our five-day thinking executive mentoring program. And if anybody is sort of, uh, you know, likes what you've heard so far, believe me, you're in for a treat when you come in for this program. So all you have to do is just email David or myself and let us know that you're interested to know more about the executive mentoring program. Uh, and we'll be straight on it with you. No yep. delays. <laughs> and you will never play small again. With that in mind, thank you guys for joining us on this journey through this series. It, I think it started out with five or six or seven, ended up being 10, but because there's so much more to say, look for us. We've got some more plans to come back and do the performance zone in this format. The regular performance zone will be back, go back on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, no, excuse me, 6 p.m., 8 p.m. Eastern time in the U.S. Uh, you reach out to me for in information on how to get onto that. That'll pick up again next week. Um, but ladies and gentlemen, remember the world, you can do, be, and have anything you want to do anything this time now, as much as you can, if you focus on all the negative stuff, you'll get negative stuff. But right now with the technology, with the opportunities, with the speed at which we can do things, there's never been a time for you to create the lifestyle and the life that you want. Just remember to put everything you have into everything you do, because the best is yet to come. We'll see you soon.